Hey class, it's our Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and uh, I'm going to show you a brief demo of materials in Rhinoceros. And this is really basic materials, this is not the kind of fancy stuff that you'll see in the upper year studios. We're not going to play with, um, with lighting or texture or anything like that. This is just essentially adding colors to your Rhinoceros model uh, that are not just like the simple kind of layer colors, okay? And um, adding transparency. and and that kind of thing. And this is going to help us do our facade studies and help us generate some some drawings that we can use for our presentation and just generally kind of help us understand and present um, our building in elevation. Okay. What I've got right now is a really simple um, kind of elevation model that I made. And I did this by, you know, um, taking some plans that I drew and kind of um, doing some offset copies of them and then extruding them up to create services. Another thing you could do would be to take a, uh, you know, depending on what your facade is, and kind of extruding um, <clears throat> one of these up and then making uh, copies of, like, where your service is going to be divided. Right? <clears throat> and then using those to split the geometry. So they split. And then the cutting objects would be these planes. <clears throat> Oops. <laughs> and then you delete these. You get that thing. And then you could go in <clears throat> and you could explode that surface. And now you have access to, you know, like windows and things. Okay, so that's something. Uh, that's a way to do it. Uh, that's a way to think about doing a study. It's it's kind of simple, but if you have an interesting like uh, plan section, kind of. And this is one dimensional. I'm not really like investing too much in the depth of the wall itself. Just like what I can see from the outside of the building. Okay. A lot of times, I, I kind of say that that's not really a very good thing. Uh, I, I don't I don't like it when things don't have thickness. But in this case, because all we're going to see is the outside of the building and we're not going to cut sections of it or anything like that, it um, doesn't really hurt anybody for it to have no thickness. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. So again, what I've got is this basic kind of model, and it's modeled in that way. I actually have this kind of uh, pier that kind of sticks out in my building. Um, I put these columns back here so that you can see something inside the building. Like once we begin to make the windows, you might begin to see some detail. Like that can be a nice thing to, uh, to have to uh, show. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is, you know, I'm just modeling, since I have this repetitive element, I, I'm going to keep copying it, so I'm only going to make, uh, I'm going to make one of these and I'm going to study it, and then I'm going to make copies of it, and it's going to simplify the process of, of adding materials uh, and adding detail, right? As I always say, it's better to make something complicated uh, and then make copies of it than to try to make everything on the facade or in your building at once, uh, if it's, um, very complicated, right? It's it's so easy to make copies on the computer. So make one good copy, uh, make one good version, and then copy it. Okay. So I've got this facade. Um, I've got like bands right now inside my building, and then these columns and things. Uh, what I'm going to do first is set up some materials, and materials are actually um, assigned by layer in Rhino, or that's one way to assign them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. And I'm going to make a layer for, <clears throat> let's say, glass. And then maybe a layer for, you know, stone. And maybe a layer for um, metal. And you don't have to be very specific about these. These are just references for you. And then you can keep the colors as they are, or you can change them to the colors that seem more appropriate for you. So, like, maybe glass is more of a turquoise or something, or a cyan. And then maybe... Stone is something like a, like a dark gray or something. Yeah, or pretty pretty dark gray. And then maybe metal is um, or maybe stone's kind of a buff uh, color. And then metal is uh, gray. It's your call. Um, those are just the colors though of what displays on the screen. 
Okay. The actual materials are if you if you if you click on the little widget here, the little circle, you can change the color of it. So here's where we're actually going, and I'm going to adjust the different colors of things. Um, so the glass might be like green tinted, or it might be. Uh, you can make up a color that's kind of a lighter blue. Whatever you want that glass to be represented as. Remember, a glass can have color. Like you've seen buildings and books of things that have different color glass. There's brown glass, like on the Seagram, kind of golden glass, um, or bronze. Um, there's green and blue glass, like on some of the buildings you see downtown, some of like the Dillard's video stuff we saw in New York City. Um, and there's also clear glass. If you're going to do clear glass, I would recommend using a color that's more um, like black. And I'll explain why um, in a minute. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. I don't really want uh, colored glass in my building. Okay, so black for glass. And then uh, the gloss color is just what color light uh, shines off of it as, and white's fine. Just leave it as white. Okay. The gloss finish, you can increase the level of gloss that something has, and we'll, we'll play with that in a second. So let's make that 50% for now. The sliders go from 0 to 100. Um, in terms of transparency, 0 is opaque. 100 is totally uh, transparent. I'm going to make mine, let's say, f uh, 90 so it's going to be maybe 70 or 80%, I guess. 80% uh, transparent, 50% glossy. It's all good. You don't need to worry about the rest of this. Don't use a plug-in or anything like that. Use just basic materials. Okay. And then um, once I've got that, if I assign something to a layer, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn um, into that material. And you won't see it in the viewport. So I'm going to go ahead and explode this uh, geometry so that I can get access to the individual services, and I'm going to click these. These are going to be my windows, and I'm going to go in on, I've opened up the properties tab. If you don't have the properties tab, you can press F3, and that pops up. I'm going to go to layer and say glass, and notice they turn blue. You don't see them as clear though, but if you go into a rendered viewport, you will see that. And notice how, like, I use black and it's kind of transparent. And that's actually created, uh, you know, kind of a window of, like, I can see the columns inside. Okay? So, like, a light black is actually pretty good for um, transparency. You can always go in and change that material. That's the beauty of working on the computer, right? So I can make it, like, you know, blue glass. Terrible. Okay. So, anyway, you can always go in and change it. Okay, so I've got that. Then I'm going to go in. I'm going to go back to my shaded view. So note the difference between the shaded view and the rendered view. Okay, rendered is as it's going to appear, you know, in the building, and shaded is just the kind of digital like modeling representation of it. All right. Then the other thing I want to do, I'm just going to take this uh, this outer kind of edge here, and I'm going to make it uh, metal. Actually, I need to make the metal material. So it's light gray, and it's going to be very shiny. Gloss might not matter, because um, we're not really rendering it, but I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. You can see that kind of flickering. That means that there's some geometry that's inside of other geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this, because I've got this slab that's behind it. So what I can do is actually I can just explode that slab. And then I can use this, this actually outside. So I had I had a band that was around this. You can see that. I'm just going to delete that band actually. Now I'm going to use these and change them to metal. You don't want them overlapping each other because you get that flicker, and that means that it's going to get confused when it renders. Like it's not going to it's not going to know like which thing um, they're going to be rendering on top of each other. Okay. See, and the other the other thing that's really nice about all this is that if I have these materials, like I have my glass and I have my metal, and actually let's go ahead and make uh, concrete. Let's just make this concrete. So it's just a it's a gray material. <clears throat> and I'll use concrete for my columns, just because, and my remaining. Uh, kind of services that I have. And I'm shift clicking here. Uh, concrete. 
you don't have to get too precise with these materials. It's really just about the composition. Okay. Okay. And then lastly, um, I'm going to go ahead and take these and make these uh, stone. And I'll turn everything back on. So, and again, the thing that I talked about, I've talked about frequently in class about turning certain things uh, off uh, to kind of make things easier. If you begin to organize things by layer by material, it simplifies your your uh, your uh, job. And again, I want to say like this is not right, right? There's probably some thickness to this, and you wouldn't have just this piece of glass sitting here as a surface. But for this study model, this is probably okay. Okay, in your building, though, really, you'd probably have a wall that runs through here and a little frame for that. But we can begin, you know, even in this thing, to kind of think about to think about like how we would detail this. Like one thing that I want might want to do is really emphasize this vertical more. So I might actually go in and uh, go ahead and uh, explode these, <clears throat> and then take my pieces that run near the glass and actually make those metal. And that begins to be more of a that emphasizes it more. So that's kind of a facade. And then once I've got that, you know, I'm kind of studying it, you know, I might, I might uh, go through and begin to copy um, these floors. Oops, I want to copy more than that. Although that is kind of interesting, though. I could just do, I could do some that, that are not. Right, and then I have kind of a a study. Maybe that's my maybe that's my ground floor or something. So I don't. You know, this is the kind of thing that you can do though that this allows you to do. This allows you to play with, like, what if, you know, what if I did this with my building? What if I did that with my building? Let's go back to the rendered view. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I changed the layer color. Yeah. So the stone. Let's make the let's make the stone color more of a buff color. When you choose material colors, you really you really want to choose colors that are desaturated. Okay. If you look around in the real world, like um, things aren't like bright colors, especially large buildings. Like like materials are are very desaturated. That means you know they. They're a little. They're actually a little dull. Okay. And when you begin, when you begin to work with these things, like you have to be careful. Like I almost think that this is actually a little bit too uh, tan. So I would go in with a color and adjust the saturation value, and you could desaturate it. So make that more like, you know, maybe 35. See that difference? Like I'm pulling some of the color out. Things are usually, you know, again, kind of worn, like the sun gets to them, they get like dirt on them, like they, they kind of wear down. Like you don't have like bright, you know, bright blues or reds or browns or things. Like modern buildings maybe do, um, but natural materials like, like, like tend not to, and they, you don't want them to stand out like too much. So, so you know, that might, that might give you um, kind of a, a way to kind of read your, your building in one form. Um, Another thing that you can, you know, you could do at this point, now that you've got this kind of study, is, you know, go and say, you know, what if I did, what if I did, like, spandrel glass uh, inside of my, inside my building. And spandrel glass is glass that, that doesn't um, have, uh, it's not transparent. It looks like glass, but, I mean, it is glass, but it's just, uh, it's, it's just opaque. So, we can make, um, you can make another layer. Called spandrel. And make it maybe a darker gray color. And you can always adjust things like manually, like I just did there, to get kind of a middle gray. And I can do a thing where I make the transparency like very, pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much opaque, but just has a slight transparency so that it does look like glass and a very high gloss. And then maybe the same color as our other 
Well, in this case, you might actually want to make it... Because we use, we use black just so that it's not clear for the glass. But if we want to do spandrel glass, you probably have to do something that actually has some kind of color. So we can, let's go ahead and mix a color for our glass. And again, I'm going to take it and really desaturate um, that glass color. Let's think about, yeah, I can do something like that. Just, let's just try it. So I might go in and, and take these middle panels and to emphasize the verticals, right, change these to a spandrel. those and then we go into glass and then let's go ahead and make that uh, and you could you know you could to do this you might look at what the uh, material properties are so that's like 195 109 255 okay So this is going to be more transparent. And that's kind of the idea of, uh, you know, when the light like shines on it, the the spandrel panels are, are going to kind of make this look like. And we might even like increase um, or decrease the transparency. So that's kind of how it is. If you've ever seen things like that before, right, it looks like it's kind of glass, but there's some of it's like slightly more opaque. But that really emphasizes that vertical. And then we have these kind of bands that kind of break it up, right? We might have like the lobby. And then maybe as we get to the roof, there's something. So this is a really good way to do kind of studies, like in the manner, in the manner that I've been doing, these kind of quick studies. Remember to give your buildings some interesting play in terms of the geometry. Don't forget about the vertical. So many of our buildings are too horizontal. Okay? And then um, once you've got this, we're gonna you're gonna want to set up a camera the way that we the way that we do um, when we're doing other kinds of drawings, right? We're doing our main 2D. So make a, you know, set up a really good camera. Uh, make sure to emphasize, uh, keep the uh, the vertical straight. Remember, uh, I haven't repeated this a lot, but this is the rendered view. If you're just in shaded view, you, this is what you get. And I don't want to see this uh, in your presentations. Like this is not a good, good looking drawing. It's it's not uh, it's not helpful. Okay. Um, what you want to do is, is um, use the renderer, actually. So use the render viewport to kind of preview what it's going to look like for yourself. Okay? And then you go in and use the render function to actually give me the image or actually make the image that, that you're going to use for uh, class. So you want to make sure your renderer is the Rhino renderer. I'm not going to mess with Maxwell or anything like that today. Okay? Go into render properties. Usually default to viewport. You want to make it bigger. You want a bigger image. Uh, it's going to be easier to work with. It's going to be something that's that's going to be um, that's going to print better. You, you can you can you can change the size to you know any of these resolutions. Some of these are very large, so kind of play with them. Um, I would say 16 by 12 is good for maybe 8 9 by 11 size. It's got a lot of detail. This is HD. <laughs> if that means anything to you. Um, and all the other settings are fine. I would change the background color to white because you just don't want that gray, like you want to have a high contrast and if you want to do anything in Photoshop, like you want that, that color to be what you make it. Um, and I wouldn't mess with the other the other settings. You just say okay and then if you hit render, it's gonna make that rendering. And that's a pretty clean, you know, view of it. Like there's it's not really uh, that complicated, right? But you can take this in and then in Illustrator, add Make 2D Lines to really emphasize it. But this is going to give you the colors of your building. Okay. And if you've got a view and your building looks kind of dark, 
what you can do kind of carefully is add a light to it. So if you go in, there's lights like create spotlight, create directional light, things like that. Um, you can say like set spotlight to view. No, actually, let's, let's make a spotlight. So this is my, my uh, thing. I can go in and say create spotlight, click a point, and then you have kind of a radius, and then, oops, there's a backwards here. Click a point where you want the light to be, click the radius of the light, and then click a direction for the light. Okay, and then if we go back into our viewport here, you're going to see, and this is just like our camera, so you're probably actually going to want to turn on the control points for it. And then you can you can like our camera you can you can aim it up just like you're putting a light on your model, okay. And then if we go into the perspective view or with our camera, let's say, and we go into rendered, that's going to give us a better it's going to give us better light. If we render it. And that's not great, so we could go in and um, increase the cone. Let's go into the spotlight properties here. So if you click on Spotlight. If you click on the uh, the spotlight and you go to the light properties, you can change the um, the hardness of it, and that's actually going to to help you kind of give you this range here. You can always you can play with the radius of it too. Um, you can decrease the uh, and increase the shadow intensity. You don't need to play with this stuff too much. Just if you need to get a light on it, if you need if you need help getting it um, to look better, you do probably want to add um, a spotlight. Okay, but don't go don't go too don't go too crazy with it. So that's going to just help flatten that out a little bit and, and not um, just give us the colors we want. Okay, so again, you know, get your you get your facade kind of lit up, get it rendered. Okay. Remember to save that camera, and then you, when you have an image, you just say save as and, uh, and save it as a I'd save it as a TIFF. Okay, save like my building, and then let's go ahead and launch uh, Illustrator, and then I'll make I'll do a make 2D in that perspective. Make 2D, select objects, all. And I'm going to do the current view and maintain the layers. It's fine. I'm not going to show hidden lines in this one. So it's going to make all those pieces. And then let's go ahead and say uh, export selected to Adobe Illustrator. Fine. Okay, well, let's go ahead and undo all those. Go back and do it again. Make 2D. All crunch. I think I have to be in a viewport that is uh, not. I think this one's shaded. Yeah, this, this one's shaded, so we don't want to do that. Okay. So I go to my top view, and I've got these lines, and then I'm going to go ahead and export those. So my lines. Right me. So if I go into Illustrator, I can do this different ways, but I'm going to go ahead and open up my lines. You can see that they actually come in with the different uh, like materials on them. The different colors that 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 we assign them—that's kind of funny. 
And then I'm going to go in, I'm going to make a new layer, send it to the back. I'm going to go ahead and place my TIFF. Place is going to, I'm going to embed that in the file. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and lock all these two. And this is kind of an eyeball thing, but you take your, take your drawing, like your rendering that you made, It. You can scale the drawing to meet the lines, or the lines to meet the drawing. It doesn't really like matter a whole lot. Once you get it into position, you can use the arrow keys to kind of fudge it, and then go ahead and play with the uh, the width and the height. Until you get it kind of synchronized here. Takes a little bit of finesse. Do a good job on this though. Like, not it's really crummy when the thing doesn't line up very well. Like, and you have a little lines out, you know, like lines outside the uh, thing. That's pretty good. So if we've got that, like, um, you can you can kind of go through and you can you can choose the lines you want. You could you could draw. I'm gonna go and lock that layer. You can go through and and uh, use those. I might I might turn off the different uh, the things for the glass, and then um, you can, you could go through. Let's go through on these like uh, on the stone layer, let's say, and you could begin to erase maybe these lines. You know, like are there are there other lines in the in the in the stone that you want to emphasize? You know, is that is that something uh, that you want to do? You could begin to selectively um, erase those. Um, you could also, and I—I I mean, I would—I would make all these um, black as well, right? Although colored lines can really can really be nice though too. I mean, if you if you if you do it if you do it right, but I mean, you could you could think of it as as a drawing, and so it has you know the lines are. Make sure that you do the stroke and not the fill. The lines are black, so you get kind of an illustration. It's kind of like kind of sketch y and maybe not in a good way, but um, you could begin to adjust, you know, the weights of things to give you the kind of illustration of it that you want. You know, again, I might I might go in and go to that layer with the uh, stone. And maybe that's actually like a brown line, and then maybe the the and and maybe it's like heavier. You know, subtly so. And then if I went in to the um, metal one, you know, maybe it's like a dark gray line. You know, and and so you can begin to kind of mess with with those pieces. But that that's how you could you could begin to kind of treat this as a as a facade, um, and uh, you know, using Adobe Illustrator. And then this would probably be a separate color uh, rendering. Okay, so just notice that back. Yeah, that's better. You just get things to line up. You just kind of give them a nudge here. So. That's a way to do a facade study with, with Rhino, just to kind of quickly um, drop some materials in. Another way you could do it, but I think it's like harder to work on, I think this is for presentation when you get in Illustrator, but what you could do is export your lines into Illustrator, right, and then do um, a, um, find the tool, do a, um, a fill, do like a live paint bucket, right? So live paint, if you have like a group of things, you select it, and it kind of ends up being kind of like a paint by number thing. So you have a fill, and you can just actually click, and you can click and drag, and so you can go through, and you know, fairly quickly actually, uh, experiment in perspective, and I'll fix that later, but. You can go through and 
and add um, different colors to things. And you know, I could do, you know, what if I did that? You know, what if I did, you know, this is one band. So, you know, that can be um, fairly quick as well. And then you can go through and turn off um, some of the lines. I feel like Bob Ross here. Just kind of huh, happy little facades. And you know, if you really wanted to be crafty, you might you might you know do some kind of shadow lines on it, like like I'm kind of doing it in the way that you do the study. Like even though it's the same material. screwing it up. But anyway, you get the idea. So you could you could do it as a um, kind of a coloring book, right? And kind of filling in and experimenting with different ways of like dividing it up. <clears throat> then when you're done with it, um, you, you can say uh, expand and then ungroup. And uh, none notice my layers are kind of obliterated, but you'll have one one set that's just your colors and one set that is all of your uh, lines and so you can always go into that group and like adjust the individual lines you can adjust the individual colors okay so live paint is the tool and you find it by mousing over the shape builder and then going to live paint bucket you have to select everything and then and then you um, you know you paint it and you'll notice that it does actually obliterate uh, the other layers like it doesn't actually keep those layers so what you um, need to do at that point, right, if you want to uh, play with it some more, is um, go into the uh, group, like ungroup it, you get all the different things, and you can pick a color thing, and you can say select, same, fill color, right, and then you can make that the glass layer, like I can put I can put those things back on the glass layer, so I can say um, object, trans, uh, arrange, send a layer, right, now I have a glass layer. All the stuff I've talked about before. Okay, so there's two methods for doing a facade study. Um, hopefully, this is pretty helpful. Um, if you don't get to it on this piece of the project, maybe you could do it for your presentation drawings uh, for your final. If you have any questions, as always, uh, let me know. Uh, you can send me an email with your file, or just come find me. Um, best of luck. I'll see you guys later.